welcome back to Hamamatsu's Tech Bytes. Today we have a Tech Byte on the new Orca Quest QCMOS camera with Kane. So Kane, welcome back. Can you give us a bit more information on what you'll be discussing today? Yeah, it's good to be back and this time talking about the Quest, which is really cutting edge technology, the world's first photon counting camera. CMOS technology has really come a long way over the last few years, and I'm excited about the new quantitative QCMOS camera. We're lucky enough to have one here today, so we can take a look at that and hopefully see some photons in our images. The range of CMOS cameras has really changed over the last few years, hasn't it? Absolutely. CMOS cameras have continued to get better and better. The noise levels of these cameras keeps on getting not only smaller, but more uniform too and that has really expanded their imaging capabilities to weaker and weaker light conditions. Starting with CMOS Generation 1, then Generation 2, Generation 3, and now QCMOS with the Orca Quest, which has the sensitivity for even the most demanding of imaging. Previously, if you wanted to get down to imaging at the very lowest of light environments, an EMCCD, like our ImageM series, was the only way to go. But now with the Quest, there's another option available, which brings all of the advantages of CMOS 2. So how does the Quest differ from an EMCCD? Oh, it has a wide number of key differences, particularly, I would say, the resolution, pixel size, and speed of readout. With an EMCCD, you are typically limited to around a one megapixel sensor, but with the Quest, that is 9.4 megapixels, and at a higher frame rate too. Another difference is the size of the pixels themselves, with the EMCCDs typically being 13 or 16 micron size, while the Quest has 4.6 microns. So with the Quest, you can take higher resolution images and at a higher frame rate too. These are really useful benefits for a wide range of different applications. The photon counting aspect of the camera is also a key difference because it's not easily possible to do that with EMCCDs. The additional noise from the electron multiplication on an EMCCD prevents a precise photon count from being measured. By comparison, with the Quest, the noise has been reduced to such a low level that no gain is needed and you can get clear and discrete photon counts from just a single image. I don't think I can explain this very well without showing some images, so let's put the camera on a microscope and see some photons. That sounds great. Let's see the camera in action then. So, to show the Quest, I've put it on our microscope here, alongside some illumination and a biological sample for imaging. I've got the camera running in our HC Image Live software, and the first thing you might notice is that this is not a square image. Actually, the resolution is about 4100 by 2300 with the Quest, and we are getting about 120 frames per second in the faster scan mode. On the right, you can see a histogram for the image pixels, which currently looks fairly normal and continuous. I have the light on at relatively high now. If I turn the illumination down, then we should start to see the histogram become more discrete as we see fringes at photon number levels and we begin to get photon counting. Now I'm switching the scan mode over to the lower noise mode and I will also change a few settings for the histogram display and illumination to make these a little more visible. So now, if I lower the illumination, we should start to see these fringes appear. As you can see, the fringes show up quite nicely, and the histogram is definitely not continuous anymore. As I adjust the light levels, you can see the discrete photon numbers more clearly, and the fringes move along to greater or lower photon numbers as they should. The main feature of the Quest, though, will be the photon number resolving mode, which is integrated inside the camera and takes the fringe data from the pixels we are seeing performs a real-time analysis to give a precise photon count for each pixel as the output. If I set that up in the software here, we can see that those fringes have disappeared, and instead we have a histogram scaled by the photon number at the bottom. Clearly, even at these light levels, we are still getting a high-quality image, which really showcases what this camera can do. So if someone wanted to find out more about this camera, what should they do? I would say they should definitely get in touch with us by phone or on our website. I'm keen to see all the interesting applications our customers have in mind for the Quest and I'm more than happy to discuss them with you.